Hello and welcome to Micronesk's how-to series of webinars. My name is Peter Marchese. I'm a senior consultant with Micronesk. And today what we're going to be doing is talking about how to synchronize Revit with Affinity by Trelligence. The benefit of this is that it's going to actually make your project teams more coordinated when dealing with the program and room information. And we're going to actually go through a really quick example of how that works. For those of you who don't know us, Microdesk is a <coughs> technology consultant in the AECO industry. We have offices up and down east and west coast, and all of our consultants, the 90 plus there, are all coming from their respective industries. I've been working in architecture for about nine years before I moved on to the technology side. Now, moving on to our presentation. There we go. What I'm in right now is Affinity by Trelligence. So what I'm looking at is typical project information. So this has things like the project name, scenarios, like different design options, if you're familiar with Revit, contact information, budget, all that. What it also does is carry information that a lot of people tend to use Excel for. So this is looking at my project program. So I've got my overall building. I've broken things down into two different kinds of spaces, my offices and my vertical circulation. So things like elevators and stairs, those are all in vertical circulation. My office has that. I'm telling it how many I want, at what square footage, and it tells me what that is. On the right-hand side, you can see things like requirements or components or individual properties of these spaces. Now, it's also saying that I've already got two of these and I still need two more. How it knows this is because I actually use this program for laying out my spaces as well. So a little old school, if you like using small pieces of paper and moving them around to try to work out your relationships, same kind of idea. I can pick on these spaces, again, look at the information within them, move these around. This will actually help me align these up and snap them to each other. I can make them bigger, smaller, look at the square footages or the requirements still, and I can set things up. From this, what I can end up doing is starting to actually look at different analyses or uh, results. This is telling me from more of a report what I have and what I still need to do. Now, for the most part, this is all pretty simple. And when I decide to save this, what that allows me to do now is come to Revit. Now, first thing I'll do is connect the project. If I'm starting this completely from scratch within Revit, I'll just say new. Instead, in this case, I'm going to say open file. So I'll come down here, go into the folder where I place this, choose it. This pulls in the project name to confirm that I got the right one. And once I have that, I have a couple of different options. Am I looking to export information from my Revit into the Affinity project, or do I want to import information from Affinity into Revit? And that doesn't have to be my design. It could be just the program information. In this case, I do want the design as well. So I'll tell it that. And then I can choose what information is coming from Affinity, including how that information coordinates. So if I've added new parameters, either to Revit or to Affinity, I can make sure that they work both back and forth correctly. I say OK, and this actually runs through and puts it all together. So here's my Revit model of what I was doing in Affinity. Really quick, really simple. Now it's coordinated, and I can continue to modify things here as well as in Affinity and go back and forth. If I'm trying to see where I am, if I've you know, brought it to Revit and I want to keep working here for a while, I can still look at my program to confirm that I'm on track. I can look at different details of things, and I can create reports from here as well. So if I've created requirements for certain rooms, I can actually see that here. So a lot of information that I can put in here. Now, this has been pretty basic. But if what I do is I actually look at a more full-featured example, you can see how I have a lot of different departments all color-coded and organized. Some of these have comments. Some of these even have requirements. And I can very quickly see which ones are wrong or have problems, such as the manager's office. Currently, I have two and three, but I really should have five totally, or my square footage doesn't match up. Same thing down here. I can see I have an entire floor. Some of these rooms actually have furniture. I can have multiple floors. Those spaces with elements inside of it can be coordinated here, and I can even have this build the room with the furniture in Revit when I synchronize this. I can do reports that actually show me relationships between things in terms of what my program area is versus the actual area, how they're organized and laid out. 
I can do room data sheets. Gives me overall cost of furniture, information, uh, what all my equipment in the room is going to be. And if I need to do a relationship diagram to confirm that things are the way they need to be, that certain requirements are met, so my service elevator has to be within a certain distance or connected to my service entrance, for example, I can go through and do things like this. So this is just a couple of really quick examples of how we can take advantage of the tool and how it actually works with other programs. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. If this has sort of uh, piqued your interest in terms of the tools or how we can actually make our, work, our workflow more efficient, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to help you out. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you very much for your time.